As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. NIL now with Lauren Sisler and Kevin Jones. If you want to learn more about name, image, and likeness, you need to go to The Source. The NIL Now podcast from Headline Studio and Reddit highlights the biggest storylines with comments from key guests in the college and high school NIL space. NIL is not a cherry on top. It needs to be thought about as a part of these young men and women's future to, you know, further their careers. You should be able to leave college with something. Subscribe to NIL Now on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome into another Thursday edition of the Strictly Stripes podcast. Muhammad Ahmad, Andrew Gillis, and Mike Nizek bringing you all the goods on this fine, sunny Thursday for those of you in the Cincinnati area. Now, if you were listening yesterday on the podcast, I said that we'd have a a little bit of a different discussion compared to what we've done in the last couple weeks with uh, free agency and grading the depth chart. We're going to talk about Joe Burrow, uh, which I teased, but we're going to talk about Burrow, more about his contract extension, revisiting some of the discussions we've had, building on that, kind of making some predictions and outlooks for the future, and what that means for him compared to the you know, likes of Patrick Mahomes and other big name top dollar quarterbacks in the NFL. So, of course, we start by saying that, um, according to Katie Blackburn, the team's executive vice president, the team is in quote unquote preliminary discussions with Burroughs camp, of course, mostly going through his agent in this case. Uh, so there is talk. Uh, a deal is in the works, hopefully for however long it takes that we don't know. There was no timetable she gave, but there are talks about a deal. But that makes me think about You know, with context, recently, I think in the last week, there were reports that Justin Herbert is in talks with the Chargers um, for an extension because he's eligible as well, drafted the same year as Burrow. Same with Hertz, also drafted in 2020. Um, The Eagles haven't really been specific, although they've made it clear that Hertz is their guy with the fact they took him to the Super Bowl and was an MVP finalist. So maybe this is something worth pondering on, but do you think it matters if the Bengals and Burrow get to a deal before or after the Chargers and the Eagles ink extensions for Herbert and Hertz? Like, do you think there might be some benefit for the Bengals setting the market before the Chargers or the Eagles try to do that? Yeah, yeah, I, I think there's a there's a huge, huge benefit to doing that. Um, you know, there was a report from from ESPN's Dan Graziano that uh, you know the price for for Jalen Hurts has likely gone to fifty million dollars a year or more. Um, so, I mean, you mentioned Burrow, Herbert, and Lamar kind of being up as well. I, I mean, if if this kind of extends, I, I know it doesn't feel likely at this moment, but you know, I, I guess I'm kind of talking for for all teams involved with their with their respective quarterbacks. If this goes into next off season, you know, if you don't have a deal done this off season, I mean, you're talking about a situation where. Hey, now Trevor Lawrence is is eligible for an extension uh, after after the 2023 season. So I, I mean, you, you don't want to kind of let this number as the cap goes up, as other guys become eligible. You you don't want to let this kind of fester here. So you know, if it, because again, I mean, lo, you can kind of see this with the Lamar negotiations, where you know there's kind of arguments over guaranteed money and things like that. Um, you know, Deshaun, Deshaun's contract in Cleveland kind of made things a little bit different and more difficult for everybody. But yeah, I mean, if I'm the Bengals, I, I absolutely want to be kind of first to market here because then everybody else is kind of working off of what you did with Burrow rather than the opposite. Because if Jalen Hurts signs for a big deal, Joe Burrow's got a pretty good case for making more than Jalen Hurts does. Yeah, I don't really, I disagree. I just think it doesn't matter. I think the market is kind of set now at $50 million. Um, and if he, if he wants to get every penny out of the thing, uh, out of this deal, I mean, I don't think that's smart for him or for the team, to be honest. So, I mean, if he wants to try to be the highest played, paid player, I think it goes against what he's kind of said, um, you know, trying to keep this group intact. Um, I think $50 million is the amount, and I don't think you kind of care what other people do. I think the guaranteed money is more of the, the kind of thing, but... 
I don't know. I just don't think you budge off of, of what you're going to do. And, and, you know, they said they had, you know, Duke Tobin's comments were different that he said that they had the framework in place. So at that point, um, I, I don't think you're rushing. Um, you know, I think the Eagles would be crazy to give $50 million to Jalen Hurts after just one season, but, um, you know, of, of, you know, him playing at that level, but that's probably another discussion, but I don't know. I just think they could be patient. Um, you know, if Burrow gets it like, uh, Duke Tobin said at the combine, then I, I don't think they have much to worry about in terms of um, timeline. You know, I, I just think you get the d- deal done. Um, you try to make the numbers work. And I, I don't think he's looking to ring every dollar because it, I, I think every dollar he goes over 50, you're just hurting, you know, your chances at a Super Bowl, essentially, or keeping this roster but, uh, together as is. So, I, I mean, I disagree with that kind of notion because I think – I mean, let's let's say the Bengals are kind of working out a framework right now because obviously there hasn't really been a lot of noise on this front. Um, you know, so we're just going to use hypotheticals here. Let's say, you know, the Bengals are kind of operating in this mold of, all right, Joe's going to sign a deal with an average of $45 million a year. That's what Patrick Mahomes makes, um, blah, blah, blah. Well, just in a hypothetical world, if you're not first, what happens if Hertz gets done and he's 50 and Herbert's 54, and Lamar's 42. Like, if I'm Joe Burrow, like, I understand you don't want to ring every day. Like, I understand that, you know, you hey, it's it's not his job to to try and build the roster. So, like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Joe Burrow and I kind of look at a situation, I understand that, you know, he's already going to be a very, very rich man. But $11 million a year is $11 million a year, and and it's more than just money. It's also a status thing. So I'm not sure that Joe Burrow's necessarily thinking, you know, hey, if we don't have a linebacker that we can pay, like if Logan Wilson has to go to free agency because of this, I'm not sure he's saying, oh, no, we can't do that. Because I think he, you know, I mean, the way that these guys are wired, especially Joe, is I am, you know, I am that guy. It doesn't matter. Put whoever out with me. We're going to win. And also, that's not his responsibility. That's not his job. Um, You know, it's not his job to kind of sit there and think, well, if I sign for X amount of money, you know, we're not going to have, you know, the money to do this. I mean, that's Duke Tobin's job. That's that's the front office's job to try and figure out. But that's sort of backwards thinking, because if that's the case, if Joe Burrow wants to be the highest paid player, then he just waits till everybody's deal done, because you're always going to be the last person to go is always going to be the highest. So at what point? So that means waiting till next year, like that doesn't like, and then you lose fifty million to begin with. So, well, I I don't know if it's waiting till next year per se. I, well, I yeah, because you're only be... going to be the highest paid quarterback until the next quarterback signs. Right, Trevor but Lawrence I think it could be waiting deal. for all. I think it could be waiting for August. Um, you know, and and then you can sign your deal because eventually you want to you want to sign a long term deal. You you kind of need to sign a long term right, deal. Right, but the but... point is, so he's the highest paid player. So the status lasts for four months. And he hurts his yeah, but I, I, I think, think that, that I think that there's sense. I still think that there's something there to be said. You know, hey, he is the highest paid player at his position. I mean, in the league right now, I think that that would matter, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it not? No, Even because it, it's it's never going to last for everybody. Like like it, I mean, if because Joe Burrow could sign a sixty million dollar contract, and then in four years that's going to get beat. Like I mean, we see that well, kind of I mean, happen it would a get lot. Beat in four months, like it'd be the next. The next quarterback, you know, the Trevor Lawrence would be the next one, and he, since the framework set, they'll just go over. Or I mean, like, right? But, I just don't see that that being a motivating for like, so you get four months of a status thing. Like, it's not a win. Like, it's a win for like a minute. It's not like a permanent mark. Like, I mean, there's always going to be players that go over you. So I, I just right. Don't see... And I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's solely due to status. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think that. Um, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily like the entire reasoning or even, or even part of the reasoning, but, uh, you know, I think, I think there is something to be said for that. And, and like, again, frankly, like it's, it's not like you're talking about, ah, well he left, you know, four million, like we have how many guys, like how many on record instances of there are there of like a guy leaving major money on the table at this position in this sport so that, you know, the team could kind of be built around him. It, it, it's Brady. Like Brady, yeah, was Brady, was in, Brady. <laughs> Brady was in such a unique situation because of his wife. Like his wife was already like <laughs> making hundreds of millions of dollars. Like more than him. <laughs> he, yeah, he exactly. So like money was not exactly an issue and it's obviously not going to be for Joe, but like, 
I don't know. I just think if you're staring down the gun of, you know, the Bengals say, hey, $44 million allows us to do X, Y, and Z, you know, but if you can get 55, like $11 million a year is $11 million a year. If you sign a seven, a seven year deal, you're talking uh, like a significant chunk of change here. This is not, you know, I oh, left, you know, $2 million on the table. This is, you know, this is a lot of money that you're talking about leaving on the table. So I, I just don't know if that's, if that's even, you know, fiscally responsible from Joe, but you know, I also don't, I also don't know how much it's really going to matter if, if you're talking about, ah, oh, well, if he leaves, you know, $5 million on the table, like what does that really get you? Well, it's also could be done. I mean, he gets more gear. I mean, I know they're hesitant to give other players guaranteed money later in the contract, uh, but, you know, the more you guarantee, you can get bigger sinus bonus. I mean, the value of the contract could be to the point where uh, it's similar in dollar figures, but it's less per year. Uh, I mean, there's ways around that. I just think you're going to pay him whatever, you, you, you know, you're going to pay him whatever it takes to get the deal done. I just don't right. see that there's, I mean, whether it gets done now or later or after those guys, I mean, they're going to pay the money. So some really, really good discussion from both of you guys. Like on, on the one hand, Mike is saying it doesn't matter. Money's going to come. The glory of being highest paid is going to last for however long it lasts until either Justin Herbert and or Jalen Hurts or like even Trevor Lawrence takes a title. But Andrew's like, well, now you want to get it now because, you know, what if he sees that and says, I want more, yada, yada, yada. So there's two interesting philosophies you guys kind of have there. And, and I think there's a case to be said for either or. It's just hard because we really don't know, like, exactly what Joe Burrow's thinking, what he's feeling. Like, there's just really nothing that anyone knows outside of the walls of the Bengals' front office. But I guess if, like, you guys are kind of looking at the annual, like, average annual salaries of quarterbacks, like, from top to bottom, Aaron Rodgers, he's the highest paid annually. You know, he averages $50.2 million a year. Then it's Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, and then Pat Mahomes is at $45 million. So I would imagine it'd be somewhere in that 45 to 50 million range at least, at the very least. But what do you guys think happens? Like if you had to guess where Burrow falls in that tier of like annual average salary, like what what would you assume just compared to those numbers I laid out and with those top paid quarterbacks I mentioned? Well, I, I think it's going to be somewhere within, you know, 45 to 50, if not over 50, just because, I mean, you look at kind of what's happened in the quarterback market I mean, Derek Carr is making thirty-seven and a half million dollars, yep. and you got Dak, Dak and Stafford, making 40. And, and like Daniel. When when you're in a league where Daniel Jones is making forty million, $40 million dollars a year, yep. like that like he's making three million dollars less per year on average um, than Josh Allen. And we can get into why some of these numbers are are, are kind of wrong um, and why they're not really you know maybe the best to to cite here, but. I mean, to me, I think if you're looking at, you know, at average per year, it, it, it's going to be above Mahomes, I would guess, just because the way the kind of salary cap has changed and the way that the the way that the league has changed. So, you know, I, I would be kind of stunned if it's below 45. And, uh, you know, I think you can, you know, we might hear this whenever he signs it. Uh, hey, he left money on the table. I mean, leaving money on the table could be leaving $2 million off the table, you know, per year. Or it could be leaving 12. We don't know. But yeah, I, I think above 45 is kind of where you start. Well, I think all the I mean, all the contracts that are above 45 are terrible, too. I mean, there's something to be said for... <laughs> there's honestly... Yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, uh, you know, three, two of those players you're paying for what they did. I don't know what you're paying Deshaun Watson for. And Kyler Murray, um, you know, I think was a mistake right off the bat. So, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's something to be said to be fiscally responsible too to try to get the number and say look I mean, there's a point at which like it doesn't make sense you know you, you, you I, 45 is what the best player is making in the league seems to be that that would be where you kind of go i think anything above that's just an excess but i mean they'll pay him whatever they they, they he wants but i mean anything over 50 is just outrageous especially when you consider the guys that the two guys at the top of the list that you're paying essentially for past performance um and you know those those teams are regretting those contracts. I, so the the thing with that though, when Mahomes signed, uh, when Mahomes signed that contract, it, it was ten years, right? So like the total yeah. value of that contract. I mean, you look at the total value of Josh Allen's, which is kind of the next highest. He's at two hundred fifty eight million dollars. 
Patrick Mahomes' total value is $450 million. So I guess you could kind of look at this in two different ways and say, okay, are you going to give, are you going to give Joe Burrow, uh, you know, a, another 10 year deal? Then maybe the average per year comes down. Um, and we can get into fully guaranteed and totally guaranteed money here soon, but you know, maybe then the average comes down if you're, if you're giving him that length of term and just basically giving him a lifetime deal. Uh, but I mean, otherwise, I, I unless that's happening, I, I can't imagine a scenario where uh, you know where Joe Burrow's not making more than forty five. Why wouldn't you do a lifetime deal? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you could, you absolutely could. If, if but if you do ten, you know, there's, there's, I, I guess the you know the school of thought. If he gets hurt, if if something goes wrong, like if if you do, you know, if you do a lifetime deal, then you know, and you give him, I don't know, ten years. 11 year, whatever it is, then I think you can kind of bring the average down because then those total guarantee, I mean, like jo- like Patrick Mahomes, total guarantees are $141 million. Uh, and he was only fully guaranteed $63 million at signing. So th- there are kind of pros and cons to, to Burrow's side and the Bengals side of, Hey, you're committing a lot of money long-term to a guy, you know, for Burrow, it's, you know, you're taking less guaranteed, but you get more long-term stability. There's, there's good and bad to both of it. Yeah, when you look at the um, – so since you mentioned guaranteed money, like per spot track, obviously, I mean, we all know Deshaun Watson. He's got the most guaranteed money at 230 mil. And then, yeah, kind of like to Mike's point where this is a big mistake, Kyler Murray guaranteed $103.3 million, Russell Wilson behind him at 124 or Actually, no, I'm reading it backwards. I'm sorry, 189 for Kyler. I was reading that guaranteed at signing. Uh, 189 and a half for Kyler, 161 for Russ, and then Aaron Rodgers is about 151, and then Josh Allen is 150. So you could look at it like in the different ways that Andrew mentioned, based on like, do you go longer and bring down the average of the, you know, you know, annual salary, or do you go more guaranteed, and how do you kind of split that up based on the years to where it's cap friendly? But um, when we come back, we're gonna delve a little bit more into why there could be a case, or why there should be a case for making Joe Burrow the league's highest paid player and maybe where that compares to uh, the top tier guys like Patrick Mahomes, who we've talked about a lot on this podcast, all of that and much more quarterback talk to come right here on the Strictly Stripes podcast. Hey there, it's Muhammad Ahmad from the Strictly Stripes podcast. And if you still don't know what Cincinnati Football Insider is, listen up. It's a community of fans who want the inside scoop on the Bengals and a direct connection to the podcast and the reporters who cover the team. Here's how it works. Andrew, Mike, and I will text your phone a few times a day with breaking news, analysis, and our insights on the Bengals. And it's the inside scoop on what we're hearing. And we're giving you the inside word before it even hits social media. If you join Cincinnati Football Insider, you get to participate on the podcast, and you can text us directly. It's a great way to cut through the clutter of social media for just $4.99 a month. Still not sure? Just try it for two weeks. And if you don't like it, you can text the word stop at any time. But you won't want to cancel once you join the community of hardcore Bengals fans. So here's how you get on board. Text 513-940-4193 or go to cleveland.com slash Bengals and click on the blue banner at the top of the page. It's a great time to join as we're covering the NFL draft, OTAs, mini camps, and much more to come later this year. So give us a try for two weeks and see what you think. Just text again the number 513-940-4193. All right, and thanks for staying with us on the Strictly Stripes podcast. Some really, really good discussion as to what a future extension for Joe Bro could look like, what it means for the market and other guys with looming extensions on the horizon like Justin Herbert. But I want to kind of break down some numbers here. So you look at Joe Bro's career stats. He's got um, 11,784 passing yards, 82 tutties, and he's already in three seasons – could say two and a half because he got hurt his rookie year. The NFL's all-time passing completion percentage leader. He has the minimum amount of passes required, which is 1,500. So he's sitting at 68.2%, and he's gone 24, 17, and one as a starter. The reason why I mentioned those numbers is because if he keeps playing at the rate he's playing at, he's set to surpass Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson um, on pace of their respective careers. Like, he's set to have more passing yards and touchdowns, but... Not quite past Mahomes. He comes close. He would be like, if you were to play six years like Mahomes, he'd be about, if you do the math, a thousand yards shy and like five or six touchdowns below. But 
it's still pretty even, which I think is worth asking whether or not you guys think, you know, Joe Burrow should be the highest paid player based on whether that works for the Bengals front office or not. Has he made a strong enough case for saying, hey, I can and should be the league's highest paid quarterback, highest paid player in general? No. No? I mean, he hasn't won a Super Bowl, right? I mean, so I would think no. I mean, if you're looking at the value, I mean, Patrick Mahomes should be the highest paid player. Everybody else should be below that. Where he falls below that wouldn't really matter. But Patrick Mahomes is not the highest paid player. So, I mean, you know, I, it it's all relative. I mean, he, he could be, and the, the Bengals wouldn't be wrong to pay him what he wants because he's a franchise quarterback. So, I mean, uh, like I said, I, I don't think that distinction matters. Like, he's not the MVP. He's not the reigning MVP. He hasn't won the MVP. He hasn't won a Super Bowl. He's not the best player. So, in theory, he should not be the highest paid player, but that's not how things work. Um, so, and because I mean, the best player in the league doesn't make the most. So, and they rarely do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, he should be paid what he, he can get, and he's going to get a lot of money. Andrew, what do you what yeah. do you think? I mean, is there a case there? I mean, there's certainly a case. I I just think it kind of depends on the scope that you want to look at. Like, I mean, we were talking about, you know, Mike kind of said, you know, why wouldn't you give him a long term deal? I mean, ten year, like, if he were to sign a a ten year, five hundred million dollar contract, you know, I, I think Mahomes is, you know, I think it's a five hundred and three million dollars or something like that at four. There's a bunch of conflicting stuff with with his contract, but it could be, I think, up to five hundred and three. So like. Joe Burrow signs a ten-year, fifty, you know, fifty-one million dollar a year contract, um, and and he's kind of the, he's got the highest value contract in the league. Like, okay, like I I don't know how many fans would really kind of dispute that, um, you know. But again, I, I think that there's a couple different ways to look at it. There's the value, there's the average per year, uh, there's the you know total guaranteed money, kind of if you you know you get roster bonuses and things like that. Um, I don't think I think we've kind of seen this with the Lamar the Lamar conversation where, you know, there's a bunch of reports out there that, you know, Lamar has not, you know, kind of asked for, you know, the, the total fully guaranteed money, but I think it's pretty clear Deshaun's $230 million guaranteed kind of threw everything into, into, you know, kind of chaos. And, and I don't think that Joe Burrow is going to make 230 million guaranteed. I, I, I frankly think there's going to be uh, a, a kind of a setback in that regard where teams are, are really will, unwilling to give out that again. You know, I think teams are probably pretty mad at the Browns for doing that. So I don't know. I, I think you, you can kind of make a case that it, you know, just does, is, does, does Sean Watson have the best quarterback or does have the best contract in the league right now? Cause he's guaranteed $230 million. I mean, I don't know. So I think there's a case. Um, I think he's going to make more than, than, than Mahomes will. That's just the way that the league kind of operates as, as the cap goes up. So uh, you know, it's not so much the money, and it, it's the percentage of the cap as well. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, Mike Brown and Katie Blackburn don't envy um, Steve Bashotti right now because of that whole mess with Lamar, which, you know, while Mike was gone, Andrew and I talked a lot about that on this podcast, and that conversation is not going away for the next couple of weeks or even months if things go the way they're going for the Ravens. But kind of back to Burrow, you know, I think, like you said, he's not going to get like a Deshaun Watson type deal. I mean, I know Lamar's situation is unique, but Joe, we, I think we can all agree. He's not in it to say, I want to be paid just like this guy because I'm worthy of all this money. He's going to get paid. He's going to make more than what the three of us will make in our combined lifetimes and an alternate universe if such a thing exists, depending on what you believe. Um, so he's going to get a Brinks truck and it's going to be at Paycor Stadium and it's going to give him all that money. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. I'm just trying to have some fun with it here. But let's kind of reverse this, though. Like, Mike was making the argument that, you know, why would he take all that money, whether it's, you know, 50 million, above 50 million, just with where the cap is? Why would he do that when, you know, you got T. Higgins looming with an extension, Jamar Chase next year, Logan Wilson, all these names, and maybe many more to come in the, in the years past and, you know, on the other side of the ball? I mean, do you see maybe, like, people kind of being surprised, saying, wow, like, Joe Burrow didn't reset the market. Like he didn't blow people away with this 50 plus million dollar year contract where, you know, maybe the guaranteed money is pretty good. Not like Deshaun good, but pretty good. But annually it's just like about what Patrick Mahomes is making, like, you know, 44, 45 versus that 50 range. Do you think that might 
shock some teams? And could that have like kind of a reverse impact? So, so you're no, saying like it? I mean, unless like the Bengals Joe, gave him a whole guaranteed like four hundred million dollar contract, I don't think anything's going to shock the league. I mean, the market is what the market is right now. Um, you know, I can't see any scenario where like. Yeah, if they gave him a fully guaranteed deal, like that would be shocking. But I think, you know, I, I don't see any other scenario like in terms of like annual money per year that would be a surprising amount. Yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of your with there are more kind of shocking outcomes, I think, with with a Jalen Hurts and with a Lamar. You know, if if Lamar does kind of get, you know, a, a big fully guaranteed deal or if Jalen Hurts does get into the fifties, I think you know, that might surprise some people. But again, like Mike said, if, if Joe Burrow signs a, a eight-year deal that's going to give him on average $55 million a year, I don't know how many people around the league are going to say, yeah, well, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, Joe just took him to two Super Bowls. Like, uh, I, 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 like if if he were to take that, yeah, I don't so, think I thought that's it was ridiculous. one Super Bowl. Or, sorry, one Super Bowl. Almost took him to two Super Bowls. Excuse me. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um <laughs> But like I, you know, I, he would have to make like above sixty uh, per year for it to be surprising, and he would have to make like forty-two for it to be surprising. Like he would have to leave not just a little bit; he would have to leave a lot, a lot of money on the table, or you know, kind of not only be the highest-paid quarterback, be the highest-paid quarterback in the league by a lot to uh, to kind of surprise anybody. I, I I just think that Burrow's in a position where. I mean, the Bengals can't really say no. I don't think Burrow's going to like go nuts with it. But uh, yeah, it, it, Bengals, it's an interesting you know, situation. For, I just don't think nothing, there's craziness involved. Duke Tobin said they have a framework in place, and the Bengals haven't done anything crazy in terms of like high or low. Like they haven't gone on a spending splurge because Orlando Brown came at the cost of you know basically their entire other free agent class, and they haven't. Not they did not sign anybody in anticipation of like so it seems like it's going to fall somewhere in the middle just if you're guessing based on how the Bengals are operating. You're saying in the middle of like that forty five to fifty range I mentioned, right? Because the Bengals haven't done anything extreme to sort of show that they're preparing for one way or the other. Oh, they he gave them an extra twenty million dollars to work with. Like they would have done, they probably would have made a better offer to Von Bell if that was the case, right? Uh, right. Or, you know, otherwise, if they had no money, they would have probably not, you know, signed Orlando Brown Jr., but they've sort of had the money they had, and it seems like they're operating under a framework that, um, you know, somewhere in that $50 million range that won't, um, you know, cap them at the knees, but at the same time doesn't give them, like, all the money in the world. So, like, like you said, Andrew, you know, it's going to really come down to what Joe wants. Like, they're not going to say no to him, but He's obviously not going to ask for, like I said, the the Sean light or allegedly like what Lamar's looking for. But I mean, like like you said, it would be surprising if he got like a forty two ish, forty three million deal. I mean, do you think he just says, "Look, I don't really care. Like, I'm happy with what I have. Like, just pay me forty two, forty three, as long as I know that you guys are going like, to do a good job with keeping everyone else." Because I know, like Andrew said, it's like, oh, it's not his job; it's Duke Tobin's job. But like, do you think maybe Mike makes a point? And it's like, ah, you know what? I want to win Super Bowls. I want to be like Tom Brady. I'm going to have, you know, maybe not like void years, but I'm not going to be the richest guy if it means I know I'm going to bring back the big dogs like T. Higgins and Jamar Chase and win a bunch of rings and throw a bunch of tutties. Like, do, do you actually think that's a pretty realistic chance or are we getting too ahead of ourselves there? Well, I mean, it's it's possible. But again, I I think you, everybody kind of talks about, oh, the, you know, you, you hear this a lot with, with Burrow, but, you know, with, with a lot of other quarterbacks in the league and, for, I mean, frankly, with other players in other sport, oh, will they take less to, to kind of keep the band back together and, and bring everybody back and, and things like that? Well, I'm not sure I because I, I think it's, you know, it's rooted in, hey, these guys are so competitive. They want to win so bad. I, I think you can kind of also look at it the other way. I, I think, you know, there also might be kind of some mentality with some of these guys where, you know, hey, roll the ball out. Give me whoever I'm going to beat. I'm going to beat whoever I have to because I am whoever that is. Like, I, I think that there's kind of, you know, a little bit of confidence that comes with that with some of these other guys who are like, yeah, I, I don't care who, who we have on their team. I'm Joe Burrow or I'm insert really good player here. I, I can kind of make this happen. So, you know, and, and again, I think we're, we're we've talked about the T Higgins thing a lot. Like, I, I'm not sure 
that whatever Joe Burrow does is going to like, is going to keep T Higgins. You know, I think you're going to see kind of a reaction whenever it does happen. I, you know, especially if he makes like 50 plus, Oh, now we can't keep T Higgins. Now we can't do well. Okay. Well, you're going to pay Jamar and Jamar is going to make, if he makes kind of like on par with what other top receivers in the league are making, Jamar's going to make 30 or thereabout. So you got $80 million that you should probably account for, give or take, with Jamar and Joe. Like, is Joe Burrow taking $5 million? Because, again, we I think we've kind of established that Joe's not going to take, you know, a crazy low amount or maybe even a crazy high amount. But is Joe going to dip to, like, like if you want to keep T, when he would probably count about $20 million a year, like, is, is Joe going to make up that difference by taking – 13 million dollars a year less I like I I don't know I just think you know when people kind of look oh is he going to take less to keep the receivers together I don't think you're going to see it in the receiver room you're going to see it where hey now that they now they can sign an Irv Smith now they can sign you know a right guard when they have to things like that it's not going to be you know a major major deal like Orlando Brown, for example. Yeah, like, like that was yeah, Joe one Burrow of the taking less. Ever made. Yeah, Joe Burrow taking less does not mean Orlando Brown or future Orlando Browns can sign in Cincinnati because some of these guys are going to be making so much money, it's not going to matter. Yeah, no, I hear that. Well, here's here's something to consider, and this is just me thinking out loud in a funny way. But have you guys seen when he was like uh, drafted by the Bengals, and like I think it was. Barstool, I believe, I forget the podcast, they talked to him and he was at his parents' house in Athens and like they were asking him, like, are you living at home right now? And he said, yeah. And he was like, my dad tells me I'm like one of the only millionaires like living with his parents right now. Like the reason why I wonder if he doesn't care that much about the money to where, yes, he's not going to go crazy low. Like, I don't think he's that crazy. Um, But like, I mean, the dude was living with his parents I mean, granted, it was during COVID, I understand it, but he was living with his parents until he basically got to Cincinnati and, like, they did, you know, OTAs, and he was officially a Bengal, and, like, he was in a uniform. Like, I mean, the dude had Star Wars, like, stickers and posters in his room. Like, I, I just don't think he's, like, I want to be rich, look at me. Like, I mean, I get with Brady, you make the case of, oh, well, he didn't have to worry about being rich because he was married to the world's richest supermodel. I'm pretty sure Giselle was the richest, if not one of the richest. But, like, even though Joe Burrow's not married to a rich supermodel, I just don't think he really cares. I think he's, like – I mean, you see the hoodies he wears? He wears, like, comfortable hoodies with, like, McDonald's logos on it. I mean, that's why I wonder, again, like, it's not going to be super low, but with just his personality and, like, kind of how he lives, I just wonder how high will he really go. But, like, do do you guys read into that, or is that just me thinking out loud? I think you're – crazy but i don't know i i understand i know yeah. so i've been told so I've been like told. I, yeah I, I don't think that matters like because again you know you can say you know joe because i think the the common line you hear from you know from from big time contracts like this from big time athletes that sign them you know it's you know I, i'm happy to make this money but i still got to perform in this and that and the other like i mean i i, I think muhammad you're off base there just because I, I don't i think you can still take a lot of money and money doesn't mean everything to you. I mean, Joe Burrow, you know, he launched a nonprofit in 2022 where, you know, he provides resources and, and uh, things like that to, to kids in Ohio and, and Louisiana. So I think you can kind of make, you can make that case where money's not that important to me. He doesn't have to be the richest guy in the world. I think you can make that case in that he does other things with his money. He does, you know, he's really active in charities. He's really active with donations, things like that. I just, yeah, I, 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 I don't think that, you know, kind of what you said is necessarily the way that you should be looking at it. Plus him and Sam Hubbard and Blake Griffin and however many other athletes invested in a farm in Iowa. So, I mean, he's clearly a businessman. And don't forget about uh, him and his parents are invested in that women's volleyball league um, that's supposed to like launch in Omaha, Nebraska next year. So he is a entrepreneur. He is Joey entrepreneur. So, yeah, I mean, that's a fair case. But again, it's like, You know, he's got a lot of things going for him endorsement-wise, investment-wise. And, of course, he'll invest more of that once he gets bankrolled this year. But I don't know. Like I said, we are just thinking out loud. We are speculating because we don't know what's going to happen until it happens. But I'll tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just going to give it away. 
we're going to actually start doing live mock drafts, which we haven't done yet on this podcast. We've been writing about them on cleveland.com. I just wrote one this morning. Go check it out. And speaking of which, uh, we have we have this newsletter. I guess you could call it. The, yeah, it's a newsletter we've been doing every morning. Um, if you want to check it out, go to cleveland.com slash newsletters and sign up for our Strictly Stripes newsletter to get the latest Bengals news, analysis, and opinion right in your inbox. It's free and the best way to keep up with all the reporting from me, Andrew, and Mike. Again, go to cleveland.com slash newsletters and go to the Strictly Stripes Cincinnati football newsletter for all that you need. Hope you join us tomorrow. It's going to be a fun one. We're going to try this out. Hopefully it doesn't go too haywire, but I think it's going to be just fine. Once again, for myself, Andrew, and Mike, I'm Muhammad Ahmad. We will see you on Friday.